actually the, um, the supplementary exam for 2023, my metric year, but uh, we're just going to look at them, the questions. So now here, we are given a, a diagram. So now, uh, in this question, we are told that uh, the diagram below represents the female reproductive system. So if you do not understand the, the, the concepts or the parts associated with the female reproductive system, I strongly recommend you to watch the video that we've produced before on, on, on that topic. So we're all talking about the female reproductive system. So you can see that this is just the system itself. So now we can just go straight to the questions. So the first question says we should identify part B. So if we tend to look, part B is actually referring to this area that is sort of gray here. That is sort of gray here. So we can see that this area is actually associated with the uterus. Remember the uterus is actually this region here, this whole region here is called the uterus. So part B is the wall of the uterus. And the wall of the uterus is known as the, the endometrium. So part B is showing us the endometrium. So we can move to question 2.1.2 uh, that says that we should name the process that takes place in part A that leads to zygote formation. So now if we can just look at this uh, with our keywords, the process, we're looking for a process or something that happens where in part A, if we can just tend to look at part A, it is actually showing us the fallopian tubes. So fallopian tubes. So in the fallopian tube, what is the process that happens in the fallopian tube that creates a zygote? We call that process fertilization fertilization so fertilization is just the process whereby the egg cell or the ovum will fuse with the sperm cell where, where does that happen it happens in this region this tube called the fallopian tube so the process taking place there is called fertilization now 2.1.3 they say we should describe the process we should give just a brief description of the process uh, which we have named in question 2.1.2. So we have said that the process taking place at the fallopian tubes is fertilization. Now we have to describe why, how does it actually happen. So remember the whole aim for fertilization, we can just make a diagram like this to represent an ovule or an egg cell of the female that is found here at the fallopian tube during fertilization. Then we can put just a diagram of the sperm cell here, something like this. So remember that when the sperm reaches here, when the sperm cell reaches the ovum, it actually breaks down this portion of the ovum, causing its nucleus to get inside the ovum. I remember that the nuclear, the ovum itself has got its own nucleus. So when these two nucleus, uh, nuclei fuse together, then we can say fertilization has taken place. So we need to know how to describe the process. It's only one mark. So we can just say um, here the sperm cell reaches the ovule. The sperm cell reaches the ovum. And then when that happens, uh, we, uh, what happens in the sperm cell, remember that the acrosome breaks down the, 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 the portion of the ovum. So we can say that... Um, and breaks down a portion of the ovum. Breaks down a portion of the breaks down a um, portion of the egg cell or of the ovum using its acrosome rights. So when it breaks down that portion, um, this nucleus of the sperm cell will actually enter the nuclear to, to will enter the ovum, and then they will fuse together. So you can say that. The nucleus of sperm cell will do what? Will enter the ovum and they will fuse and they will fuse. 
so here i think this is enough to get you the one mark although this may seem like it's too many points but then we are just describing fertilization i think this can be even worth three marks because you know the points so the sperm cell will reach the ovum here and then it will do it it will break down a portion of the ovum or it will penetrate the ovum and then when it penetrates the ovum what happens the nucleus of the sperm cell will enter into the ovum and when it enters into the ovum it will fuse with the what with the nucleus of the ovum so something like that so i think you can just get your one mark from mentioning those points please mind that uh, whenever you're writing life sciences you never know what they actually mark so you need to to say as much as you can yes we can just say that as much as you can just to end um couple of marks so we can now move to question 2.1.4 question 2.1.4 it says we should also describe the development of the zygote until implantation occurs so i've done this in one of my previous session before again that here since fertilization takes place here what will happen this ovum will have what will have two nuclei now it will be the nucleus of the ovum that was originally there as well as um, the nucleus of the sperm cell that is penetrated right so we call this thing a zygote so we need to know how does that zygote develop remember this whole process is taking place at the fallopian tube right so now how does it develop until it comes and implants at the endometrium it comes and implants here actually yes so how does it develop so the points here 2.1.4 okay so first of all we need to know that a zygote undergoes mitosis or it divides by mitosis undergoes mitosis and that is a mark you have to say that the zygote here is undergoing a process called mitosis so mitosis is just a cell division so this thing this zygote will do it will divide through a process called mitosis and then it will form a whole of it will form a ball of cells actually so forms a ball of cells so it forms a ball of cells so it forms a ball of cells just means that um uh, let me just open a new page here so here I remember our zygote was the combination of the nucleus of the uh, of the ovum as well as the nucleus of the sperm cell so now what will happen this will undergo a process called mitosis and it will divide right that is the process of mitosis so when this divide they will actually become more they'll become more something like this now become a ball of cells let me just do something like this so now they become a ball of cells so they are doing what they are dividing right so this ball of cells we call it what a morula so we come and say forms a ball of cell called a morula called a morula so that's another mark so this morula this ball of cells that is coming from the zygote will also divide also by the process of mitosis so mitosis is actually the primary process that leads to this zygote to develop into a, a fetus and a human being eventually so now here this will divide again let us just say divide and form something like this uh, something like this and then now they've divided now is now a ball of cells but then in this case we call it a hollow ball of cells they just like to use a diagram similar to this one yeah something like that so when this morula when this morula divides remember it came from the zygote so when this morula divides by mitosis it will become a blastocyst so it will become a blastocyst so it here we say that this morula will further divide will further which further divides which further divides by mitosis as well which further divides by mitosis so when it divides it forms a hollow ball of cells a hollow 
pool of cells and then you say it is called the blastocyst think you can get all the marks so now you have described how the, uh, the, the the zygote develops after it is fertilized remember that this thing was an ovum initially remember this thing was an ovum initially and it had only the nucleus of the of the ovum but due to fertilization there was a sperm cell that came here and then the nucleus of the sperm cell that is here let's just say this nucleus of the sperm cell got inside and then they got attached to form a zygote through fertilization, right? And then this zygote will divide uh, to form a pool of cells called the morula. And then the morula will also further divide to form a hollow pool of cells called the blastocyst. So yeah, that's how you get the four marks there. Sorry. So now let us continue and go to number 2.1.5. It says explain. You are explaining something two ways so we want two ways in which part d is structurally suited for gestation so when you say something is structurally suited it means something is able to do something what makes it able to do something for example you are able to talk because you've got a mouth right you are able to see because of you have got an eye you are able to hear because you've got an ear so in this case in this case when we say um structural uh, suitability or maybe structurally suited anything that suggests that just talks of what power what does part d have that causes it to be suitable for gestation so we need to know what what is gestation first of all gestation is just the period that this fetus um this baby develops inside the the the, the, the womb of the mother so now part d we can identify that it is this whole region called the uterus so here the question says we should try and tell what uh, two ways in which the uterus is able to carry out gestation so uh, we can just take the following points okay so that was 2.1.5 so first of all the uterus uterus or part d is a hollow organ it's hollow so this is a mark to say that the uterus is hollow so when you say that the uterus is hollow it means it is white it has got a, a bigger area you can see here it is sort of like a pear shaped so it has got a bigger area so what uh, since it is hollow then how is it suitable for carrying the baby since it is hollow it can accommodate the baby right so the uterus is hollow to accommodate to accommodate the developing embryo or fetus rather the developing the developing fetus so this is your second mark for the first structural suitability so here we're trying to say that uh here this thing uh, the, this uterus this region which i've painted in yellow which i've highlighted here but d it is big it is hollow meaning that it has got a, a lot of space so that it can do it it can accommodate the baby that is growing the fetus particularly so now another structural suitability is that uh, part d is muscular so part d is muscular the uterus or part d is muscular so when you say that it is muscular it means there are a lot of muscles at the uterus so what is the advantage of um, the uterus having those muscles uh, since the uterus has got uh, many muscles, remember muscles, um, they, they, they sort of like protect the, the fetus, the developing fetus. So you can say the uterus is muscular to do what? To protect the developing, the developing fetus. So I think this can end us all the four marks. So here... Just remember that whenever they say something that has to do with structural suitability, you have to mention something that uh, this part has that makes it suitable to do a certain function. In this case, we were asked that um, well, well, what does part D or the uterus have that makes it to be suitable to carry a baby? Yes, 
a forecastation, right? So now 2.1.6 now uh, says, describe how the secretion of the prostate gland provides protection for the sperm under the conditions of part C. So the secretion of the prostate gland, remember the prostate gland is part of the male reproductive system. Um, I have done videos on the male reproductive system if you would like to watch some. But uh, here, the prostate gland is that gland that does what? That secretes something into the sperm cells, yes. So that the sperm cells can be produced by the conditions produced in part C, that is particularly the vagina. So now we have to describe the secretion. When we're saying we're describing the secretion, we are telling what does that secretion do actually is to do it to provide protection for the sperm so now here the prostate gland you can just say this is 2.1.6 can now say the prostate gland prostate gland it does what it secretes an alkaline fluid secretes an alka line fluid so when you say that it secretes an alkaline fluid it means it is opposite to acid so remember when something is acidic uh, the opposite of acidic is actually alkaline so it secretes an alkaline fluid into the sperm cell right into the sperm cells to do what to protect to protect the sperm cells the sperm cells um, from the acidic conditions, acidic conditions of part C or of the vagina. So now here you're explaining what does that you're describing actually that secretion, that fluid secreted by the prostate gland what does it do to protect what to protect the sperm cell under the acidic condition of part c so remember that this part c it is what it is, it is acidic in a way that if sperm has to enter here unprotected it actually dies but luckily there is a prostate gland that secretes an alkaline fluid that opposes the acidity of this region part c causing what causing um causing the sperm to be able to travel successfully up up until it reaches the fallopian tube for fertilization so do tell me if you got all these questions correct and don't forget to subscribe tell your friends to stay tuned